Hey NVIDIA, what's up? Jay here. So I got that uh, the delivery and I just want to make sure that we're all cool with that uh, offshore Swiss bank account before we get going. Yep, that, that's the one. Okay, so we're good on that. Cool. All right guys, thanks. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you in a bit. I'll let you know when the job's done. All right, bye. Now we can continue. So what you think? You know, I'll be honest. I'm uh, kind of impressed by its proportions. I know, right? All right, but let me show you something here. Ugh. I kind of like the thin ones. Mm, but this one is about form factor. Yeah, but mine can fit in tight spaces. With girth, you can open tight spaces. It's like a master key. Whether you like thick or thin, the ITX lineup from Fractal Design is sure to have something that tickles your fancy. Remember, it's not the size that matters. It's all about how you use it. No, it's definitely the girth. No thinness. Girth, dude. Thinness. Girth. There's no contest. No, there's contest. It's girth. Okay, all joking aside, guys, let's go ahead and talk about the newest addition to the Pascal family of NVIDIA GPUs. And I'm going to go ahead and say it right now because some of you guys are going to say it anyway. I was wrong. I said on Tech Talk, and Jerry will confirm that I said there was no room for the 1080 Ti in the already pretty cluttered Pascal lineup. And one of the cards that's not even here is the three gigabyte uh, GTX 1060. It's a very cluttered stack in my opinion. So I didn't feel like there was room for this. Obviously I was wrong. 10 months into a life cycle of a graphics card is still perfectly legit to introduce a new top dog. Now AM, AMD. Now NVIDIA, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I know, right? All this AMD shit I've been doing recently. NVIDIA touted a couple of things that I want to check in this video. The first being that the 1080 Ti is up to 35% faster than the GTX 1080. And then they kind of made a, a quick little reference but didn't have any charts to support it that it's faster than the Pascal Titan X. Now obviously I've got two Titan XPs in Skunk Works and this Titan right here is actually one of Terry Crews' Titans that I've yet to put in there. So of course the, the claim that a 1080 Ti is faster had me kind of sitting on pins and needles a little bit about crap. Did I, did, did this take too long now? But anyway, we're gonna check all of that. Okay, now I don't wanna talk a whole lot about specs. We've already done videos about specs. I did a quick little video at GDC. There's gonna be tons of videos about this. Uh, that's actually not under embargo anymore. So you guys should already know by now. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a high level here. Now, typically what NVIDIA will do is they'll take their Titan X card, shave off a few CUDA cores, have a little bit less memory, a little bit maybe slower memory, and then they'll call that the TI. No, this is different. They actually have a, the full 3,584 CUDA cores in the 1080 Ti, which already has you kind of going, okay, so what's the difference? Now the 1080 Ti does have a few less ROPs in the Titan X coming in at 88 versus the 96 over here on the Titan X. But the 1080 Ti actually gets a boost in memory speed over the Titan X coming in at 11 gigabit per second versus the Titan X's 10 gigabit per second. Strange, it also has 11 gigabytes of G5X versus the 12 gigabytes of memory on the Titan X. So what really happened here is it's exactly the same core wise, the same GP102 core, but they gave it a memory speed boost, a thousand megahertz of memory speed boost. The question is how much is that gonna make up for ROPs and things? Now, before we talk about the benchmarks, there's a few things I want to lead in with. One, I am using press release drivers. So these are not the official game ready drivers. These are early access. The other thing to mention too is all of the cards I use, the 980 Ti, 1080, 1080 Ti, and Titan X are running with a static fan speed of 70%. And the reason why I did that, all of these cards hit their thermal max, which means that GPU boost basically shuts down and you no longer get any of that benefit because in order to keep the thermals under control, it starts to slow down the clock to where the base clock is, or not the base clock, the base boost clock of whatever these cards are. So you do get the boost clock, you just don't get the benefit of GPU Boost 3.0 that takes the speed up and above and beyond that. Now I think most people are waiting for the add-in cards which are gonna have custom coolers anyway, but like I said, full transparency, 70% fan speed on all the cards tested.
you guys could see, the 1080 Ti did indeed best the GTX Titan X in pretty much all the tests. Interestingly enough though, the Titan X performed better in Firestrike and in Time Spy than the 1080 Ti did, but then the 1080 Ti did pretty much better across the board in all the games. Now we're talking a difference of like one or two FPS, sometimes maybe up to like three or four, which is not a huge difference, but obviously the huge difference between these two is the price. We're talking 1200 bucks versus 700 bucks. So what do you get for the extra $500 on a Titan X? Well, you get eight extra ROPs, you get 88 ROPs versus 96 on the Titan X, and you get one extra gigabyte of slower memory. They're both running G5X, although the 1080 Ti, due to its improved power delivery and its dual FET power delivery, um, they've also found a way to squeak even more performance out of their memory. The 11 gigabytes of G5X on here has a throughput of 11 gigabits per second. Now, what do you get for 500 extra bucks with the Titan X? Well, you get one extra gigabyte of slower memory and you get uh, eight extra ROPs. Those two things are not worth $500, especially for gamers. Now, let's talk about the memory because it's really the memory that's making the 1080 Ti faster than the Titan X. Remember, they're the exact same CUDA core count and they are pretty much the same speed when you start looking at GPU boost. Now, GPU boost on both these cards will kind of put them to the same frequency, but as I said, the coolers will start to dynamically bring them down because they're just, the founder's cooler is the loudest and the hottest of all the cards. But one of the reasons why the 1080 Ti is also faster than the Titan X that I found through a lot of sanity testing, because I was going nuts trying to figure out what is actually making this card faster, the 1080 Ti, uh, it's over here actually, the 1080 Ti, has a slightly improved cooler, and because of the removed DVI port on the back and a little bit more surface area on the cooler and better airflow, this is able to keep the frequency a little bit higher before it starts to hit that dynamically controlled thermal limit. So the Titan X was slowing down on the frequency more so than the 1080 Ti. So faster memory and slightly faster core speed, even at 70% fan speed, the slightly improved cooler is indeed uh, up to the task of keeping this faster than the Titan X. Now, obviously when we see custom boards designed for this, you guys, all these cards you see behind you, me here, is custom cards. It's gonna be way faster than the Titan X because the Titan X, they don't allow custom cards and custom coolers to be shipped with them attached. Some brands have come up with custom coolers you can put on here, but they don't ship that way. You gotta do it yourself. So as you guys saw, speeds out of the box, no overclocks applied to this. The 1080 Ti does indeed beat up its bigger brother a little bit. These are pretty equally matched cards. What's not equally matched about them is their price. The nice thing about the 1080 Ti though is it does come in at MSRP pricing of 699. So there's no more artificial inflation of the pricing of the card because add-in cards uh, or add-in board partners obviously are not going to price themselves under a founder with MSRP because they feel their cards are better, et cetera, et cetera. Now, there's really no compelling argument to even consider that anymore, which really kind of sucks because I have two of those. And even though this is only a little bit faster and minor on water, I still go, damn it, I want the latest or greatest one. And not to mention this one right here. This is this is one of Terry's cards. It's okay. Just the name alone makes it appropriate for, for Terry because the guy's kind of a Titan himself and it's like, yeah, he's got Titans. And again, his are gonna be on water. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's interesting to me that Nvidia has completely cut off one of its own fingers over there. And I think personally, if, if it wasn't for the fact that these were sponsored by NVIDIA, again, thanks for sending these over for Terry Crews because I sure as heck can't afford $2,400 worth of graphics cards. Uh, I, I think people who got Titan X's might be feeling a little bit disappointed because typically the Titans are shaved or the 1080 Ti's or Ti versions are shaved down Titans with less CUDA cores and whatnot. Not this time. So the question is why? Is NVIDIA feeling a little bit of pressure from the upcoming launch from Vega? Are they seeing what's kind of happening between the performance and cost ratio of AMD's Ryzen versus the X99 offerings on Intel? Are we seeing an answer to something that's not even out yet? Well, time will tell. And of course, I'll be doing Vega launch stuff uh, as well. And of course, add-in card partners or add-in boards, whatever you want to call them, AICs, AIBs, everyone calls it something a little different. When these start launching, you'll start seeing them and we'll see how much gain there is to be had once you keep the cooling down and the clock speed up. Guys, thanks for watching. I love doing graphics cards reviews. These are fun. It's the only chance I get to play games anymore. Granted, I only get to play the same benchmarks and the same missions over and over and over again, but damn it, I'm getting good at those missions. But it's not like I have enough video cards as it is, right? Anyway, guys, there's one more thing I gotta do here before I get out of here. Let me, uh, just make a quick, uh... Hey, video, what's up? Jay here. Yep, 
so the deed is done. Now um, you guys just gotta, you know, kind of keep up your end of the bargain there. All right, funds have been transferred. Great. So uh, also too, I've been meaning to ask, how are the kids doing? The the kids I gave you last year for the Titan X's that are that are currently in Skunk Works now. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> you know the great thing about kids is you can always make more. All right, thanks. Thanks again. Talk to you later. Bye. That was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> stupid cells, man. <laughs>